We are Pro Cannabis Media. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Weed Talk News. I'm Jimmy Young, the founder of Pro Cannabis Media. And I'm Kurt Dalton, the founder of Cannabis.net. Another wild week in the world of weed, Kurt, and it looks like the biggest story is right here in our home state, our native state of Massachusetts, where finally the adult use recreational retailers have finally been able to reopen after the governor, Charlie Baker, shut it down for COVID-19. And as you can imagine, sales have been brisk this week. It's just like we talked about in past shows, Jimmy. They did find a solution, like a middle ground, like we talked about. So, of course, pick up curbside, use the electronic platform to order, call ahead. Uh, and sales are, again, cars are lined up. We can't say people are lined up, but obviously the tax revenue and the sales have started. So a lot of happy faces on Memorial Day weekend in Massachusetts. A, a back to a week of normalcy in this crazy new normal that everyone seems to be going crazy about from all just not only here in Massachusetts, but all over the country. And speaking of all over the country, we are going to actually have new reports, not only from north of the border in Canada this week, but also from our nation's capital in Washington, D.C., thanks to our friends at the Vote Pro Pot podcast. Uh, so again, we are we are continuing to give a roundup to the world of cannabis news. That's right. And uh, obviously, it's a, a big industry that's growing worldwide. So getting uh, different uh, reports from different parts of the world at this point is really a great part of the newscast. And that's what we'll be doing. But we're going to start things off right where we always seem to start things off in New York City with our own Deborah Borchardt. Deborah? Thanks, Kurt and Jimmy. We had a short trading week due to the Memorial holiday on Monday, but traders were allowed to return to the NYSE with some restrictions. This week, MedMen warned that COVID had affected its sales beginning at the end of March, though the company said that as restrictions have started to lift, the sales look like they're ramping back up. The company did report revenue of $45 million in the third quarter and a net loss of $76 million. Now, those losses have been trimmed a bit from the $96 million in the previous quarter. Zenerva Pharmaceuticals announced positive top-line results from their exploratory open-label Phase II Bright study. The trial was designed to assess the safety, tolerability, and efficacy of the Zenerva cannabis drug called Zygel in pediatric patients with autism spectrum disorder. So that is great news. Tilray's wholly owned subsidiary Hyde Park Gardens is going to be closing their doors over the course of the next six weeks. The company said it expects to realize about $7.5 million in savings per year. As a reminder, Tilray bought Natura Naturals, which it renamed Hyde Park Gardens, in a deal valued at $35 million. And that's it for this week. I'm Deborah Borchart from the Green Market Report for Weed Talk News. And just as Deborah talked about, we're seeing consolidation north of the border. Um, you know, expenses that look good maybe a year ago and purchases are kind of being written off at this point, as Deb said. So you're going to see this trend continue as the cannabis industry kind of starts focusing on profits as opposed to just build out, build out, let's lose money every quarter. And is it is it really profits or are we just in survival mode like so many other businesses around the world right now who have to deal with this pandemic? It's survival, isn't it, Kurt? It is. And you're seeing, you know, they overestimated legal demand. And of course, the Canadian as well as the U.S. black market is thriving. So we have not put a lasso around that wild Bronco yet. And that's hurting uh, legal demand up in Canada. Well, again, speaking of Canada, that's where we're going to go next for our next report, courtesy of our friends at MJ Biz Daily International. Here's Solomon Israel. I'm Solomon Israel from Marijuana Business Daily International, and this is the Weed Talk News Canadian Cannabis Report. Canadian cannabis sales hit a record high in March, according to the latest retail sales data. The COVID-19 pandemic hit overall retail sales in Canada hard, down 10% from February to March, but retail sales of legal cannabis increased by 19% over the same time period, reaching 181 million Canadian dollars for the month. In British Columbia, the provincial government is considering opening up online cannabis sales and delivery to private sector stores. Right now, cannabis e-commerce in BC is restricted to the province's government-operated online store. BC has issued about 200 cannabis store licenses to date. And cannabis grower Tilray is shutting down a large greenhouse in southern Ontario. 
Tilray bought the High Park Gardens facility as part of a deal to acquire Natura Naturals Holdings in 2019. It's the latest big Canadian cannabis firm to close a greenhouse facility this year. You can read all those stories and more at mjbizdaily.com. That'll do it for this week's Weed Talk News Canadian Cannabis Report. I'm Solomon Israel from Marijuana Business Daily. Now that coronavirus has wiped out in-person conventions, MJ BizCon is putting on two online events from June 29th to July 1st. MJ BizCon Direct and the Hemp Industry Daily Conference Direct. Both events will feature industry speakers and exhibitors, and you will be able to communicate directly to them in this state-of-the-art online event. You can register today at mjbizconference.com. That's M-J-B-I-Z conference.com. All right. Thank you very much, Solomon. We look forward to continued reports north of the United States border, but back here in the old U.S. of A. You know, cannabis advocates for years, Kurt, have used different methods to get their advocacy in front of the voter populace, whether that's through the ballot box or through the local legislature. Now it looks like they're going to start suing the United States. And one group in particular is out of Arizona, the Scottsdale Research Institute. And a few weeks ago, you might remember that they exposed that the United States was in violation of an international treaty uh, blocking the grants for research in cannabis. Well, now that same group is taking on the United States again, trying to get cannabis descheduled. Uh, is this another strategy? Are these lawyers smarter than most of us? Or they, is this just another tactic to try and get more attention to the cause? You know, Jimmy, if you had asked me that before their previous lawsuit, I'd say this could go on for 10 years and get shifted between federal courts and then appeal courts, and it gets dragged on forever. But I'm wondering how they are, based on their recent victory in, in cannabis court, as we'll call it, to file this motion against the DEA and uh, get the drug descheduled if they have some sort of motivation or they think they can actually win it based on precedent just set in their past case. So I don't know the actual details, but again, fingers crossed that a group of lawyers are much smarter than us and they think they see an avenue or a window to either deschedule and or legalize uh, in a way. And of course, Washington DC is always the battleground for a lot of these. And sure enough, there was already a case before the Supreme Court involved with a Ohio case. And who better to talk about what's going on in our nation's capital than our friends from the Vote Pro Pot podcast. Here's Phil Adams. I'm Phil Adams from Vote Pro Podcast, and this is the Weed Talk News DC Report. We start with the Supreme Court refusing to hear an argument over the decision of an appellate court in Ohio over an, administration, over an administrative decision not to put decriminalization measures on a ballot in Portage County. The Federal Appeals Court agreed with the defendants that state law allowing them to choose not to place the decriminalization measures on the ballot is their prerogative, as it deals with an administrative rule change in their view, as opposed to a legislative matter. 44 members of Congress are calling for an independent investigation as an unarmed black EMT nurse was gunned down during a botched marijuana raid in Louisville, Kentucky, where police were executing a search warrant for an alleged marijuana crime. This comes a day after the FBI announced it would be investigating the incident after a second African-American dies at the hands, or in this case, the knee of law enforcement in a week causing racial violence to explode in Minneapolis. That'll do it for this week's Weed Talk News DC Report. I'm Phil Adams from Vote Pro Podcast. All right, thank you, Phil. And of course, right now, emotions are very raw, not only in the nation's capital, but all over the country, and especially in Minneapolis. So we've got the heat of the summer. We've got uh, Twitter and the president warring over each other. If I, I thought at one point that the president and Twitter were in bed together. Now they don't want to have anything to do with each other. And, and people are just really, really emotional and angry about what's going on. And then, of course, right at the top of the food chain in the cannabis space is high times. And they, too, are right in the middle of more controversy, Kurt. Yeah, the red lights are also flashing in the cannabis industry. The Basically, the crown jewel of the High Times Harvest Health deal doesn't look like it's going to be moving over to the High Times brand. It was a San Francisco dispensary uh, next to Chanel, the high-end district. 
Uh, there's been, it was released today that as that the owner is not part of that deal. It will not be going. He doesn't know much about it. And there's going to be lawsuits. It, the license may go back to the city of San Francisco. Um, you also have CFN Network, a media company in the cannabis space uh, that got a PPP loan. And we've talked about that, Jimmy. It's a dangerous thing for cannabis companies to go down this road. But now we have a cannabis company which supposedly getting over $200,000 as a loan and not paying employees. So it's not even a cannabis thing. It's taking the loan now and not paying your rent and employees like you're supposed to. So this is not going to end well for cannabis one way or the other. Um, let's just hope for the best on uh, maybe the government, you know, won't be as, as, as looking at a few things on this side. But I never liked the idea of going down this road for cannabis and PPP. And again, that Safe Banking Act remains stalled in the Senate for this next COVID-19 uh, bailout bill. So, you know, again, it's never a dull moment when it comes to the cannabis space. And of course, because of COVID-19, cannabis is right in the middle of everything right now. And we, none of us, nobody seems to know what's going to happen. And that includes even in our sports universe too, Kurt. You keep hearing these rumblings that sports may be returning. And then as they get closer and closer and get into some of those little details, all of a sudden, nothing is happening anything fast right now. So uh, as I say many times, Kurt, it really is a whole new world of weed out there, isn't it? Yeah, we really got to keep our fingers crossed on that Safe Banking Act. The person who introduced it thinks it's 50-50. It, 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 it makes it through the Senate. That might be optimistic especially since you and I covered our good friend Mitch McConnell and his 68 times mentioning cannabis and smirking. It'd be hard for me to see him letting that sneak through. So again, fingers crossed, keep fighting. That's what we have to do. That's what the cannabis universe has been doing for many, many years. So again, another week in the books for the cannabis space. We'll have more of this as we move on with our Weed Talk News report. So for now, that'll do it for another edition of Weed Talk News. I'm Jimmy Young, the founder of Pro Cannabis Media. And I'm Kurt Dalton, the founder of Cannabis.net. Remember, it's a whole new world of weed out there. Use it responsibly. Let's be safe, folks. We Talk Now, We Talk News, and In the Weeds are all available on most major podcast distributors like iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and our friends at clnsmedia.com and our flagship, cannabis.net. So subscribe, share, and like our videos on all the social media networks out there, including LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, The Weed Tube, and YouTube. Weed Talk and In the Weeds are two productions of Pro Cannabis Media supported by Revolutionary Clinics, one of the top medical cannabis dispensaries in the Massachusetts area. Now with three locations in Greater Boston, two in Cambridge and one on Broadway in Somerville. Rev Clinics has a patient first mission. They will customize your needs as a medical patient with the proper titration and combination of strains, flavors, and products. Rev Clinics, where the patient comes first. We are Pro Cannabis Media.